Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Poly Medicure Q1 FY25 Results Conference Call, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Nisha Shetty from ICICI Securities. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Anjali. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to welcome you all on Q1 FY25 earnings call of Poly Medicare Limited. Today, on this call, we have the senior management of the company, represented by Mr. Himanshu Bair, managing managing director. Mr. Naresh Vijayvardhya, CFO, and Mr. Avinash Chandra, Company Secretary. I would like to thank the management of Poly Medicare for giving us this opportunity to host this call. And with this, I will hand over the call to the management. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Nisha. Uh, uh, thank you for you know hosting this call. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you know. A pleasure to talk to you again about the progress of the company for the previous quarter. I will take you through the earnings of Q1 FY25. Uh, the revenue of the company, uh, and compare from Q1 of FY24 to FY25, increased from 320 crores to 385 crores, uh, roughly, almost increase of 20%. A bit of margin also increased from uh, 87 crores to 104 crores. Again, an increase of around 20%. And PAT margin uh, increased from 62.7 crores to 74 crores, uh, increase of 18%. So we, we have actually progressed uh, as per the guidance we had given earlier. And the company is in, on track uh, to, to perform uh, this year as per the guidance given earlier of 22 to 24% growth and uh, also improvement in the EBITDA margin of 100 to 150 pips. Uh, we, we have done, uh, you know, our capacity expansion of first phase is over, and uh, we have added a new plant and machinery uh, over the four plants where, uh, you know, where we, we have, you know, expanded in last, uh, you know, 12 months, 18 to 12 months. Uh, the capacity now has increased from 1.2 billion units uh, to 1.5 billion units per year. And by end of the year, uh, we will further increase the capacity around 1.7 to 1.8 billion uh, units for medical devices. So there's a, there's a rapid increase in capacity by over 50% uh, over the year because the infra is ready now, and mostly the, the, the capacity addition is, having, is happening to the plant and machinery, which you are adding in each plant step by step. Of course, these are all special purpose machines, so it takes time to, to get these machines from the vendors or to, because Delivery time is between 12 to 18 months. And as we are, we are seeing the traction for each product line, we are building capacity and capability across those product segments. So, uh, and basically, the more expansion we will happen in the transformational segment, which we have talked about earlier, renal, cardiology, and critical care. These are three important segments. We continue to expand faster uh, than we were doing in the previous years. And, and more most CAPEX has been done uh, for these three categories. Uh, renal business uh, in Q1 has increased by over 40%. So this is, this is something very really heartening to note. And we are on track to grow from 90 crores to 140, 145 crores in the current financial year. So this business, the, which was uh, lagging last year, we are able to bring back it on track. And of course, the regulation which was, uh, you know, enacted on 1st October 2023, that has really helped us to, to, to ensure that, you know, only good devices, are good quality devices are sold in the country. And whatever was parallel imports coming uh, for, for non-regulated products, it is stopped now. And I, I think uh, this is, uh, you know, a good progress for us. And similarly, on the machine side, dialysis machine side, also we are seeing a good traction. Uh, we have now a good order book. Uh, as we have told earlier in the year, this year we plan to sell close to 400 machines and maybe even go up to 500, uh, depending on how this order book matures. But we have a good traction and 
and we are on track for this kind of growth. Uh, we have added 40 plus sales associates in quarter one, uh, which is in line with our plan to add 100 plus people in the current financial year. And these 40 people have come across mainly in the new verticals, uh, critical care and cardiology. And we continue to expand the team and the reach so that we can reach out to more and more hospital uh, for these products. Uh, our gamma sterilization plant is under construction right now and should be uh, live by early next year. Uh, this we have done specially to ensure that we have full control on the sterilization process. And this is more safer process compared to the ETO gas which we use today. And knowing that the gas is a little hazardous, uh, you know, gamma plant is more safer. Uh, all safety safeguards are in place. Currently, we use third party services. But once uh, our own plant is ready, we'll be able to move uh, most of our sterilization to this plant, which we also today, you know, to other vendors. Uh, on the export business side, uh, you know, we have grown uh, in Q1 by over 25%. Uh, domestic business has grown only 6 to 7 percent, and, and there is a reason for this. In FY24, early Q1, uh, we had some government orders for, uh, you know, uh, auto disabled syringes, which was for a vaccination program. That program is now almost over. So we have seen that drop in requirement from the government. But on the other side, the trade sales has grown by 25 percent. Government businesses may be overall around 20% uh, of the total uh, uh, domestic business. So there was a drop of 50% there, but overall trade business is grown by around 25%, which is the balance 80% of the business. So hopefully, uh, you know, uh, by the end of this year, uh, quarter two, quarter three, we see we have a good uh, visibility on the domestic business. And we should grow by around 20% plus uh, in, in, in the next few quarters. Uh, cardiology and critical care business has taken off well. Uh, we have launched four to five products in each category. And further, uh, next few quarters, we'll be launching another four or five products to expand the range. Uh, current focus uh, in critical care is towards oncology field, uh, which is mainly for cancer drug delivery. And we, we see a good traction here. Uh, we are using the technology from our, uh, you know, Italian uh, plant uh, to grow this business. And also a lot of products have been locally developed uh, to, to augment, uh, you know, the, the whole range of products for drug delivery. Uh, Q1 CAPEX was close to around 70 crores. Uh, this is in line with our uh, annual plan of 250 crores, which we announced earlier in the year. And uh, as and most of the CAPEX, as I mentioned earlier, is happening in these four new plants, uh, you know, where we are adding new production lines to expand the capacity. The, the company is also investing in AI-based tools for, for upgrading technical skills of salespeople. And, and these are some new tools which we have seen in the market. We have tested them. And actually, this will uh, help to enhance the capability of the salesperson who is going to a hospital or, or to meet clinicians. And we will also do a lot of training programs you know, to our international clients and also our uh, training programs to nurses and doctors through this AI-based tool. So we are already working on this. On the U.S. business update, uh, the first sale of infusion products has started. Now we are ramping up production capacity by adding new equipment. Uh, uh, we, we are very hopeful that this new equipment will be uh, ready by end of the year. But meanwhile, we'll continue to manufacture with the pilot equipment which we had established earlier. We already have four FDA approvals, uh, you know, which have been obtained right now, and we are in the process to, to get eight to ten new approvals in the next uh, 12 months or so. So with this, almost 12 to 14 products uh, will be FDA approved, and that will, you know, give us a good visibility uh, for the U.S. market, uh, you know, and U.S. business, uh, which are very hopeful that, uh, you know, it will you know, grow as we have projected earlier between 15 to 20 million dollars in the next three years time. Uh, PLI, there is not much update as the current, current scheme was not favorable. Uh, you know, even in the current budget, the outlay for PLI is only 85 crores, uh, you know, um, for existing companies which have taken PLI. So more or less this scheme has not worked well for medtech industry, medical device industry. And we have been pushing the government that 
uh, if they can come out with a new scheme, uh, you know, which is more favorable to the industry and which really supports Make in India. So we, there's a constant work in that direction, but we haven't heard anything in the current budget. On the new development, product development side, uh, we are already on track to uh, launch 10 to 12 new products every year. Uh, you know, the most important thing is that, uh, uh, you know, we, we continue to, to expand our R&D base, uh, you know, expand our product lines across all verticals, not only focusing on those three transformative verticals, but we are also focusing on transfusion and vascular where we will keep on adding more and more products so just to, you know, ad address the whole basket, the whole therapy in, the, in that segment. Uh, in the budget, uh, nothing important has come for the medtech industry. Only positive news that government will rationalize GOP structures across GST and custom GOP platform over next six months. Currently, we have a varied GST rates of 5, 12, and 18 percent, and probably in some cases we have inverted GOP structures. So I think what we heard as an announcement that government may look at those uh, you know issues and and maybe rationalize this rate. On the yearly outlook. Uh, we continue to guide, as I said earlier, 22 to 24% revenue growth for FY25 and 100 to 100% market margin improvement uh, over this current financial year. Uh, this is based on the current traction we see in both domestic and export business. Uh, and uh, even uh, when we look at the new transformative businesses, renewal card uh, and, and critical care, which are ramping up right now, uh, these are also, you know, Businesses this will add more more margin, you know, uh, what what we have now. So they are probably uh, when you look at critical care and cardiology, they are higher margin businesses for us. And as we ramp up, I think we will see you know some improvement uh, in the margin profile of the company. On the export front, I think I will look at the total growth of the company. Uh, last year, exports were around two thirds uh, exports, one third domestic market, almost 67 percent and 33 percent ratio. But in first quarter, the ratio has changed. Uh, we have 70% exports and almost 30% domestic sales. So because of the high growth in exports, we were able to improve that, that ratio to a certain extent. And probably uh, in the current year, this ratio would probably remain in the range of you know plus minus 1-2% or 70% and 30%. Uh, Europe continues to outperform for us. Uh, we have grown over 30 percent, uh, you know, in the quarter one as compared to the previous year, and and this is pretty heartening because, you know, in spite of all the global challenges and headwinds uh, in the global supply chain, and uh, you know the sea freights are kind of increasing again, uh, there's a huge shortage of containers which is impacting actually uh, the business in the short term. So still uh, we, we have grown the export business. And as we hear from, from industry sources that this container shortage or export rate rate will only come down by October, November. So next two, three months, it's challenging. But uh, we are very hopeful that we have to mitigate this risk, you know, and, and, and continue with, uh, you know, the good growth so far uh, in the export business. Company also received the Export Excellence Award for FY22 and 23 as the largest exporter of consumer medical devices from India, from the Council. I'm also proud to say that from last 10 years, the company is a leader in this category. We were also recognized by Economic Times as one of the best healthcare brands for 2024. So these are some of the you know, accolades the company has received in the past few months. Uh, we are also eagerly awaiting for a new drug uh, and medical device act 2024, which will reshape the regulatory pathway for medical devices sector and segregate, you know, largely the medical devices from drugs. Uh, this is very important because currently all the drug regulation apply on medical devices. And sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we get caught up uh, with, with the issues which are there in the pharma industry, which, which are not related to us. So I think it's important that we have this new regulation or act enacted soon so that, that the whole sector can be carved out of pharma and uh, drugs. Uh, there are also a lot of other government initiatives like supply chain establishment for manufacturing, uh, expanding scope of PPO orders so that more making India products are procured by the government. So a lot of initiatives are happening parallelly, uh, you know, especially to support making India. Uh, 
I'll just take you through the uh, uh, other aspect of the fundraise which we have recently announced. The board recently gave approval to raise up to 1,000 crores through QIP process, which was uh, done through a board meeting uh, end of June. And most part of the funds will be used for CAPEX. We plan to build three, four new facilities in the next 24 months to expand manufacturing capability uh, as we see a good traction and, and some new projects we are working on probably uh, this will help us to scale up faster. Uh, we also plan to deploy part of the funds uh, into an organic portion uh, to the technology advancement uh, and also to shorten the, the product development cycle. Currently, it takes three to five years to launch a new product after a proper clinical trial and regulatory approval across global markets. So I think to shorten this cycle, to add you know, products much faster uh, in the whole basket, I think we will have to look at certain an organic opportunities. We are not sure uh, what it is right now, but as soon as we know, we will definitely reach out to you and explain you uh, the rationales for, for doing those inorganic, uh, you know, uh, let's say technology transfers or where we are going to invest money uh, in, in the long run. Uh, we are seeing a keen interest from uh, you know foreign domestic funds in the medtech space in the last two three years, which is a great sign for the industry. Pre-COVID, this industry was uh, capital starved and probably very few people knew about the medtech industry. But now, with proper recognition, capital flow has eased out a lot uh, in the industry. Uh, so this is uh, you know what we we see uh, in the long run. Industry is getting recognition uh, more and more. You know, companies are expanding faster and more capital is available for the industry to grow. And this is a good sign. Uh, our overseas subsidiaries and JV company remain profitable. They continue to expand operations uh, in Egypt and Italy. China plant, uh, we don't, we have not added anything new. And, and as I explained earlier, uh, due to cost structure reasons, as in maybe next few years, we may, you know, maybe we curtail the operational even maybe completely shut it down. But again, that decision will depend on, you know, global external factors. Uh, this is all from my side. Uh, uh, I'd be happy to answer, uh, you know, questions, uh, any questions from people on the call who have joined, uh, you know. And uh, thank you for your time once again. And thank you again for your participation and support. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish, you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers by asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the questions are assembled. The first question is from the line of Javi Shekhawat from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Sure, thanks for taking my question. Uh, Mr. Dick, first question on the domestic business. You alluded yeah. to the fact that there were certain one time orders from the government that you lost during the quarter, yeah. which the last year. What was the contribution of that for the rest of the year, 9 months FI24, the remaining 9 months? So it was for a very special product, which was for vaccination programs from auto disabled syringes. So we have already discontinued the product uh, after the end of last quarter, first year, first quarter of last year. Wonderful. So there is no other reliance for the remaining part of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, this was mainly for the auto disabled syringes, and we have started this business only because of government assistance because there was a huge shortage of supplies at that time. Wonderful, sir. Yeah. On the U.S. business, uh, given yeah. that we've already announced tie-ups with a couple of GPOs there, so what kind of access does that provide to the medical institutions that are there in the U.S. market for you? See, basically, they will be placing the, the product directly into the market, and they have their own sales team to do that. So our, you know, job is limited to manufacturing in India and, you know, managing and, and maintaining those quality standards and regulatory requirements and, and training uh, those people initially on this product line. But beyond that, I think mostly the business will be managed by them locally. 
And sir, do you believe that they'll be able, given that those BPOs sort of provide to tens of thousands of medical institutions in the US, and do you get access to all of those? With respect to your products, or are there specific institutions? See, where they, they will be site? probably, you know, starting with few institutions, you know, to begin with, and then they, they scale up. Basically, the scale up will happen maybe in few years, and already there will be existing contracts with, with existing suppliers and manufacturers. So it, it's not going to change overnight. But that's the reason we are, we are saying that there's a ramp up period, and maybe in next three years we'll see that ramp up. That's what okay. we have been calling out. And so similar to Europe, wherein you have more of your direct presence to the hospital, are you looking to sort of build similar thing in US as well over a period of time so that you get direct feedback from your customers and possibly? So we, we already have a team out there. You know, we, we have a yeah. couple of people in US right now. But uh, as, as time progresses, you know, we will also maybe build some clinical resources so that, you know, we have a direct access uh, to the market and information what's happening out there. Understood. And uh, you recently had your Vision 2030 strategy meet. So could you talk about some of the targets that you set for yourself and the vision that you have? See, I, I can't talk about future numbers too much. But yes, I think uh, the opportunity size, and I think Vision 2030 is mainly focusing on, uh, uh, you know, Indian market. There is most, you know, in the Indian market than what is happening in India and, and how we, we can, you know, actually out, let's outsmart the growth, which is 12 to 15%. And can we do big, around, let's say, 22 to 25 percent growth in India? And I think uh, with with all the you know ideas we have got uh, from our team, I think we're pretty sure because these new two verticals will do well in India because there's a lot of gap between imports and and local manufacturing. So that is where we are trying to focus. Renal seems to be very promising, and uh, overall, you know, the opportunity size is too big because. Market is going at 12 to 15 percent. Uh, we are still not present in every hospital. We still have only 40 percent coverage, and uh, we also uh, have to go deeper in each account where we are operating today. So when we look at this leverage, I think the opportunity is is quite big actually. Sure. I can't give you the numbers, but it's quite big. I totally understand. So lastly, on your capacity expansion, the new three facilities when as and when they come up. Uh, what kind of a overall capacity increase does that lead to? And then what do you think would be the peak revenue potential from all the 15 capacity? Yeah, you are asking the same question in another way. But uh, so again, the idea is with these three or uh, four new plants which we established between 23 and 24, we were able to increase almost capacity by 50%, from 1.2 million to almost to 1.8 by the end of this year. Right. And similarly, with these two new plants uh, which we will establish, Again, we want uh, three, sorry, next four plants. We're looking at expansion, and this expansion is more focused towards, I think, uh, cardio or critical care. So there's a number may not agree, but the value would increase, uh, you know. So again, you know, in increasing it to buy another 40%, 50%, that's the plan. Right, because my question is in terms of continuing to reinvest in your capacities. I mean, does that leave you with a lot of capacities which can possibly give you a 20 percentage plus growth for the next five years without much capacity investment? No, no, we have to keep on investing. I think this industry needs, a, you know, a tactical investment every year, and I think uh, that is what we need to do. And because there's a lot of technology, if there's something which is not static, that you start something, uh, it's not like a steel plant that you invest once and then you're done. Here, every year you're adding new technology in the existing product also. So you have to keep on investing to upgrade and, you know, look at, you know, new areas. Oh, sure. That's going to continue. Uh, and then with respect to these inorganic opportunities, uh, it's my last question. Are you also looking to get into any related medical equipment as well? I can't answer that. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshi from the yeah. Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Congrats on the great numbers. Uh, I just wanted to understand this point you made on how PLI has not worked very well for uh, medical devices in India. So, just wanted to know the roadblocks that are coming in. See, what has happened is government, uh, you know, called out four categories of products in PLI. But they equated everything on the same parameter of equipment, implant, consumables on the same parameter that you need to do incremental revenue of 60 crores every year. Starting from zero uh, and, and, and first, from first year onward, do incremental revenue of 60 crores every year. 
so and i think in certain industries it is not possible even the equipment industry is struggling today so every year you can't almost double your business or increase by 60 70% in that category uh, because it takes time to establish the product and you know uh, especially when you are supplying to government you need three years of market standing so that was not well thought of and uh, even you know government uh, you know department asking for certification which are you know like ce us fda certifications on machines so that take two to three years to actually get uh, you know one regulatory certificate like that so on from day one you can't get so most of the companies are not able to comply with that incremental revenue and because of that the the the, the, the there's no incentives even been distributed so this year if you read the budget fine print only 85 crores have been allocated to medical device sector for pli the whole scheme was for 3420 crores year 3 would have been the peak year uh, which is the year 3 this year you know fy 24 25 and in the peak year uh, which is third year we were looking at 1000 crores of incentives to be to be given to companies but the only incentive paid will be 85 lakh which is the budgeted in in government document so even that budget will be there or not nobody knows understand thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pain from dollar please go ahead hello yes. yeah am i audible yes please so when what, what is the intention in competition in domestic business if you can uh, sorry could you repeat that question there is some disturbance on the line yes come on Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Uh, so, go to know that infusion sales contribution in domestic business is how much? Uh, infusion products uh, we don't call out separately, but it should be close to around uh, 60% to 65%. Uh, okay, sir. And uh, what about the gross margin? Is uh, uh contribution as the contribution from export is high so uh, do you maintain the guidance of uh, what you have given for the full year yeah we we have already uh, again in, in the beginning of the call i already said that we are maintaining that guidance which we have given of a revenue growth of 20 to 24% and uh, even the margin we have you know spoken that there will be an improvement by 100 to 150 pips by in the in the current financial year when you look at the whole year, year as a whole Okay, and since you have guided for uh, 20 to 24 percent of export growth of so total year. growth, total growth, not export. Okay, revenue total revenue growth of the company. And uh, any uh, guidance for domestic growth? You maintain that growth or no change? Yeah, domestic growth. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, we are looking at between 20 and 22 percent overall growth for domestic business in the current financial year. But export will be slightly higher, so then the blended growth will be 22 to 24 percent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vino Patipati from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Um. Good evening. Um. Just a question on capex. Uh. What's the capex plan? Uh, how much uh, are you going to spend on capex this year? So this year uh, we have already given a guidance for 250 crore which was already spent around close to 70 crores in the first quarter and for the rest of the year we'll be spending around close to 180 crores or something in that range okay and, and that is going to substantially go up in the next couple of years yeah it will go up because uh, first of all we are going to set up you know four new plants so that is uh, you know that is something which we are already working on right now And uh, these current capex is happening in the existing plants which we set up in last couple of years. Understood. So if I roughly put uh, your capital raise plans and this together, uh, roughly yeah. two fifty three hundred crores of maintenance capex plus another three hundred crore three hundred three thirty crores of uh, new new plants, so roughly six hundred. Sort of crores roughly per year capex for next three years is it some way is a rough back of the yeah, envelope calculation. So the maintenance capex uh, will will end by let's say middle of next year, you know, mm -hmm. and because these plants will be saturated and then we will not be putting any new investment other than you know minor, but there is no major then you know because these plants will get saturated. 
So, but the new capex, if you are planning, would be a runway of 300 to 350 crores. That is what we are seeing, and then maybe another 100 to 150 crores of maintenance capex. So you will see something between 400 and 500 crores of capex happening in next couple of years for further growth, uh, you know, accelerated growth. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The next question is from the line of Harshi from B's Capital. Please go ahead. Um, sir, I just wanted to know how is the dialysis business coming along that year on the target of 500 for the year? So if you could share uh, how is the Q1 then? Yeah, so Q1, uh, we, have, uh, we have seen a 40% plus growth in revenue. Uh, the target for the whole year is between 140 to 150 crores. We have already ended over 30 crores in the first quarter. And, and the traction is, is quite strong uh, because as we have localized production for the machine uh, we have also you know expanded uh, expanding capacity for our dialyzer production and other products so we're pretty hopeful that uh, you know for the year uh, you know we should be in between 140 and 150 crores which is probably will give us around a 50 percent over growth over the previous year okay thanks Thank you. The next question is from the line of Girish Jain from KGMC Finsov Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and Yamaki uh, and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, just a couple of bookkeeping questions. Yes. Uh, could you give us some idea about the current uh, debt of the company and the, uh, you know, the inventory the company is carrying given that some uh, last year we were facing some logistic issues? So Girish, typically we carry uh, two months of raw material inventory uh, in the company because of the current supply chain crisis because a lot of raw material is imported. Almost 60 to 65 percent raw material is imported. You know, coming from different suppliers across the world, you know, we have almost 250 suppliers for different kind of raw materials, parts, components, which are used in critical manufacturing. Uh, on, on the uh, finished goods side, we, do, we don't maintain any inventory on the export front, which is 70% uh, of our business because all is made to order. And uh, for the domestic business, we carry probably one month of finished goods inventory. And uh, so that is the current cycle. On the debt side, the long-term debt in the company is at this moment close to around 7.5 crores, uh, which is going to be over by uh, end of October. That's the final tranche for payment. It's an ECB, which we had taken a few years ago. And working capital, uh, that would be around 150 to 160 crores. Okay, and if I have time, uh, uh, I'd like to add in one more question. Sir, yes. uh, uh, on the CAPEX plan, uh, we had four new plants which we had, uh, which have now become operational. Yes. And uh, in the further fundraise, which is the company is planning, yes. uh, the entire money of 350 crores, which will be put in these four plants, or some new locations are being envisaged. No, so all what we are doing is current in the current plants, whatever capex we are doing right now in the current financial year, and partially in the next financial year, is being funded from internal accruals already. And whatever new fundraise we are doing, these are four new, look, completely brand new locations. So, and I'll, I'll also call out these locations. So, one, there's a new location in uh, uh, Faridabad, which is outside of Faridabad, and one in Haridwar and one in Jaipur. Uh, of course, it is in close proximity to existing plants, but not really attached to the existing plants. And, and then maybe a fourth location we are sorting right now. Maybe we'll get into one of the medical device parts which are being set up in either in uh, UP or or in NP, uh, we are already looking at you know by you know looking at uh, some uh, you know properties in that area. Okay, and the, the existing balance. medical device plan, parts. Okay, and the the balance uh, out the remaining out of the fundraise could probably use for working capital and or in, inorganic uh, opportunity. Yes, yes, absolutely, sir. absolutely. Okay, 
Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Harsh Shah from Dalal and Rasha Stocking Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a follow up on the uh, previous participant's uh, question. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you could, you know, kind of um, uh, say a ballpark figure, how much of the amount from the fundraise would be used uh, for an inorganic acquisition or a technology transfer? If you could call out. A so, uh, though, so, though we have not finalized anything, but we, we, we may keep 25% or 30% of that amount for that op opportunity. Majority of that will be going for uh, CAPEX. Okay, so uh, the the new four uh, plan for the location that you were saying, so would that be only in um, cardio and critical care or something else is also? Uh... See, mostly uh, because these are new businesses, we have just started last year, so we need to have scale up uh, in these businesses. Uh, so we, we are going to mostly spend money in that area. Because these are very deep technology businesses where we have to invest uh, deeply into manufacturing and then the uh, equipment, the infra is very different from the current infra. Correct, got it. And uh, lastly, say if I take a five-year or a six-year uh, view, is it possible that our EBITDA margin uh, can uh, exceed 30% or the, do you think it's more perfect? It's very difficult to answer this question right now. Uh, let's not speculate. But I think, uh, yeah, we are trying hard. And uh, in fact, this year also you've seen margins are close to 27%. So uh, stretching another 5 7%, 8% is not a big uh, difficulty from that 27% number. So hopefully, uh, you know, we should be there in a few years, but I can't give you a, a correct timeline on that. But that's what we would probably aspire to do. Got it, got it. That's it so much, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Shivan, Shivam Saxena from ICICI Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. So just uh, two questions. Uh, what is the current capacity utilization of the plants currently? And secondly, how much time it takes for a plant to become operational? So suppose if you do a capex for a new plant, so yeah. how many then it will give revenues? So, uh, yeah, sure. So the current capacity utilization is close to 75% and maximum we can go at 80% because of the variability in the products which we manufacture. And uh, on the, uh, uh, let's say, the second question was on sorry, can you repeat that? Okay. Uh, basically, how much time it takes for a plant to become fully So I, I think on the plant side, it takes typically two years to build a plant and then get all the regulatory approval. Then we get a once the plant is ready, then only you can apply for a sort of regulatory approval. This could have taken another because we have to undergo clinical trials and regulatory approval. May take around six to twelve months depending on the product complexity and the criticality of the product. And that is India only, specific. And then once you are going to go to global markets, then you need another 12 to 24 months, depending on the country where you are applying for the registration. So that is the typical life cycle of starting to build a plant to be fully operational and functional, maybe between four to five years. Okay. And the current hiring that you have done, so what is the purpose of that hiring of people? Hiring is for sales. These are sales people. Only for sales. No hiring. There's no, no this is addition in, in the sales team, of course. We have also added maybe around 75 people in the plants across different, uh, you know, in regulatory quality, manufacturing, R&D, and other services. But mainly we are calling out more on the sales side because this is something we want to build more strongly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Girish G from KGMC Finserves Group. Please go ahead. 
thank you for this opportunity again. Mm-hmm. Manchu ji, you, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, the China plant uh, 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 is not doing great and you may in the future consider uh, yeah. closing those operations. Yeah. Did I understand correctly? And if yes, uh, what could be the impact on the revenue and the profitability? No, uh, so China plant is a very small plant with less than 40, 50 people and, and the revenue is under $2 million from China plant. And the reason we will we will probably close it down is because of current cost structures in China much, much higher as compared to India. And also the plant lease is expiring in the next 18 to 24 months. Initial lease was around 20 years, so we are almost at the end of the lease period. And I think uh, the management team and the board have probably have taken a call. There's no point in extending that and you know, taking into you know, another 5 or 10 years. So we will... And I think now uh, there is no such advantage coming out of China, being in China. Because I think in India we have already grown uh, in, a, in a good way, which will actually, you know, make China factory redundant, almost redundant. So will it be correct to assume that the impact on revenue will be less than $2 million, whereas on the impact, there might be a positive impact, on the impact, there might be a positive impact? Yeah, because ultimately all that cost goes away. And uh, I think uh, and two million is nothing. It would have reached two hundred million dollar revenue company. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitant Tarikar from Bonanza Portfolio. Please go ahead. Congratulations to the marginal of the chapter of Mumbai. I just had a bunch of questions. First, um, um, the uh, US FDA, uh, you are signing four US FDA approvals and C210 for the current debt. So, in what therapeutic segments are these uh, FDA signed? And the second would be the guidance on the new plants that are being, uh, that we are, we are planning to set up. Any geographical guidance of where these plants would be? And thirdly, are there any new therapeutic segments or devices that we are willing to explore in the coming or uh, next two years? So uh, on the first question, I, it was not very clear. Maybe we were too, too close to the mic, so maybe if you can repeat that. The next two I've understood, uh, but uh, the first question, if you can repeat on the US FDA, was not very clear. So uh, like the currency, we have signed so US FDAs, and uh, like uh, the, the total figure is going to be eight to ten for the whole current year. So where, where are like in what selected segments are these? Uh, uh, FDA style in choosing therapy. Uh, uh, products, which is, uh, you know, where we are applying for FDA would be more on the uh, vascular access and critical care. These are two important areas we are focusing on. Vascular access is the core business of the company, so we will focus there uh, because we have a good global competence in that area. And and the next segment will be focusing will be more on critical care. Side. And on the new plant location, we have, I've already mentioned a few minutes ago. The plants will come uh, in Jaipur, Haidwar, and Farid- and, and Faridabad, which uh, in the uh, in the uh, you know outskirts of Faridabad. And the fourth plant we have not decided. We are still contemplating uh, if it go to a medical device park. And on the segment side, I think we'll, for next four to five years, we'll continue to focus on the current six segments we are into. But whatever agencies we see, maybe when we do renal, we could probably look at you know urology side of the business. Or, you know, when we do critical care, we can also look at maybe gastro side. So these, these are some of the agencies you will look at, but I can't tell you anything which will do what we'll do in five years from now in terms of business, new product areas. But currently we have enough to do in the, the current segments itself, what we are doing. Okay, that answers the right question. Thank you. Thank you. The line of Chivan Saxena from ICICI Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking the question again. Yeah, just wanted to understand about what is the frequency of price hikes in this sector. Do you take it is easy to take price hike in the sector? No, if, if there is a big change in raw material cost, then definitely you will take a price hike. And you know, overall, we have our experience of now 27 years of running the company. So, uh, what we have seen is that. Uh, prices are more or less steady because uh, you know we don't see too much changes as our gross margins are pretty high so we are able to manage any raw material shocks which come in the market so more or less the prices remain stable and if, if there is a 
untoward change in in global pricing global, global raw metal you know let's uh, say supply chain then definitely we go back to customers and ask for a price hike but it depends on the contract depends on business to business so there is no set formula for this so how is the competition is high in the sector competition point of view that means so if there was high competition there would be many players in the market many medical device companies will be talking about Okay, and another another thing, as you said, that it will take four, three to five years to uh, um, uh, pick up revenues for the new plants. So, what will be the revenue uh, revenue growth drivers till uh, till that period? If no, you can. Uh, that period, we already have established four new plants in the last two years, and most of these plants, uh, you know, will get populated. So, by 2027, these plants will probably get exhausted in terms of capacity and capability. And as a result, we are now planning to build four new plants, which will get operation by 2026 and 2027, and therefore, plus 20% of revenue for the following three years. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Harsha from Dalal and Brasha Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um. Thanks for the call up. Uh. You mentioned in the uh opening comment that uh, we have grown about uh 30 percent in Europe. So uh, I mean uh, uh can the commendable uh growth. But just wanted to understand, is it just cost difference that is helping us to win? Uh, more market share uh, in Europe. See, basically, it's about market penetration. There's been more and more products. That is important because as as the funnel is now open, so we in the same let's say in the same hospital with the same distribution partner, we have we have able to add more products. So that's number one because we we have a very wide range of products which we offer. Of course, in India, when you're making in India, you have to be cheaper because we are there. We're competing with local players. Or with global international players, so definitely, uh, if you are matching on quality and performance, and if it's price, there is a price delta. Definitely, then we have a better chance of supplying those products. And uh, what would be the price delta ballpark? It depends on product to product. Very hard to say, you know, what what you know is uh, delta. But I I would say maybe 20 25% price differential for sure between Indian companies and large multinational companies. Okay, got it. And uh, lastly, um, in terms of risk share uh, in the export uh, market, what could be that risk share? Um, uh, obviously, right now we are facing that container availability issues uh, yes. and stuff like that. But other than that, what is the issue? Was that... also there in 2022, so it is not new. And maybe also prior to that, you know, when whenever there is a crisis, global geopolitical situation, always. The trade imbalance kind kind of kicks in, so I think that is always kind of mitigated. Or yeah, sometimes you have to pay higher freight, or customer has to pay pay for a little higher freight. But again, you know, over a period of cy- cyclic, so it comes back to normal. I think to me the biggest risk I see would see in the export business would be, uh, you know, if we are really making bad quality products, but which we are not because we have 27 years of experience in selling in overseas markets today now. So and we are in more than 100 countries today selling our products. So we are very well diversified on the geographical side. Uh, we are very well diversified on the product portfolio. So these all these things, and we have run multiple plants. So all this helps us to mitigate that risk, which can arise because of one product or one country. Got it. And uh, I just uh, lastly on IB Canada. So uh, uh, what percentage of revenue would that be contributing? uh between 25 to 30 percent and that would be uh mainly in europe right not really we are, it's a global product we are the third largest manufacturer in the world we have almost 10 percent global market share on that business in terms of volume uh sorry what what, what market share did you mention almost 10 percent market share global volume got it got it yeah that is from us thank you thank you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please press star and one to ask a question.
participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now, now I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, again, uh, thank you everyone for your time and I think uh, a lot of good questions asked. Uh, this really helps us to, to do better and you know, you know, your thoughts which are coming from outside really, you know, give us a very different view on the business. So uh, I, I would, you know, continue your support, I will have participation so that, you know, we, we can do better every time you know, when we talk. And thank you again. Uh, I'm looking forward to speak to you in future. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.